We begin in the Middle East, where Israel's Prime Minister has promised he will do everything to restore security at its northern border with Lebanon. That's after the Israeli Defense Forces launched airstrikes against Hezbollah. Israel says it identified preparations for a large-scale attack. Now, these pictures just released by the IDF show them attacking a number of Hezbollah targets. Israel's defense minister has issued a 48-hour state of emergency in the country. Now, meanwhile, Hezbollah said it launched more than 300 rockets and drones at Israel and targeted 11 military sites in response to the killing of its top commander in Beirut last month. The group has said this was an initial response and that it has completed phase one of an attack on Israel. These are live pictures from the Israel-Lebanon border, which has had a number of missile strikes in the last couple of hours. And this was the IDF's announcement earlier from IDF spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagiri. From right next to the homes of Lebanese civilians in the south of Lebanon, we can see that Hezbollah is preparing to launch an extensive attack on Israel while endangering the Lebanese civilians. We warn the civilians located in the areas where Hezbollah is operating to move out of harm's way immediately for their own safety. Hezbollah's ongoing aggression risks dragging the people of Lebanon, the people of Israel, and the whole region into a wider escalation. Israel will not tolerate Hezbollah's attacks on our civilians. We are operating in self-defense from Hezbollah and any other enemy that joins in their attacks against us. And we are ready to do everything, everything we need to defend the people of Israel. That was the IDF spokesperson Daniel Hagari. Well, meanwhile, the Pentagon has said in its words, the U.S. is postured to support Israel. And the president, Joe Biden, has instructed officials to maintain close communication on developments. Well, Laura Blumenfield is a Middle East analyst and former senior policy advisor on the State Department's Israeli-Palestinian negotiating team. She told us more about the strikes and reactions from both parties. The Israelis have called for a 48-hour period of emergency. Their Secretary of Defense, their Defense Minister Gallant, um, you know, is, is calling on the population. So it's not just one night, you know, one and done. On the other hand, so much about these exchanges of the, since October 7th has been not so much about being strong, but being smart. And so it's kind of our intelligence versus your intelligence kind of battle here. The Israelis were clearly caught by surprise on October 7th. The Shukr assassination was an intelligence coup for Israel, as was the Haniya assassination um, in Tehran. So I think Hezbollah is, is feeling like they need to show that they can in some way penetrate um, and kind of shift that kind of dignity back into balance. It's possible that, you know, they, they already have, it's horrible to say, but wounded one person in Akko, which is quite deep into Israeli territory, that that might satisfy the need, uh, you know, for publicly saving face. Now, also, just one update for you. The Lebanese ministry, according to uh, news agencies as well as local reports, uh, is saying that one died in the Israeli uh, strike in uh, the south of Lebanon. Our news correspondent, John Donison, is in Jerusalem, and he told us about the fears uh, of escalations in the region. This is clearly a significant and ongoing escalation. We're not at the point of full-scale war yet, but that is clearly uh, the fear not just here in Israel, but in Lebanon and the wider region. Israel saying around 100 fighter jets uh, were used in this operation last night, hitting around 200 targets in Lebanon. Now, if that's the case, then that is the most serious attack on Hezbollah since the full-scale war between Israel and Lebanon uh, back in 2006. Now, you know, in the last few weeks, we've seen intense diplomatic efforts to try and stop the crisis in Gaza escalating into a wider regional conflict. Uh, but the United States has warned that the failure to get a ceasefire and hostage release deal in Gaza uh, could see uh, this escalate into a wider regional conflict. At the, at the moment, judging on what's happened to mor this morning, you'd have to say that those diplomatic efforts have not worked. And John, Hezbollah has said that this was in response to the killing of its top commander, Fouad Shuk, on the 30th of July. Of course, there's also the fact that Ismail Haniya was assassinated in Iran uh, and that Iran, which backs Hezbollah, also vowed a, a strong response. 
I wonder whether putting all of this into context, can we see this as tit for tat or is that the real risk that this could uh, meet further responses from Hezbollah as well as Iran? Well, I think tit for tat kind of downplays the significance of this. You know, when Israel assass uh, is believed to have assassinated the leader of Hamas, Ismail Haniya, in Tehran uh, the day before they had assassinated, uh, as you say, a very senior uh, Hezbollah commander in Lebanon, Fuad Shoka. And we have been waiting for some sort of response from Iran and from Hezbollah. Now, in the past few weeks, that response has not really come. There has been some cross-border activity between Hezbollah and Israel in the north, but not really significant until this morning. And we've not had any kind of response uh, from Iran to uh, the targeting of Ismail Haniyeh inside the Iranian capital. So the fears have been for the last few weeks that that response was coming. Uh, and certainly from the north, from Hezbollah, we've got something this morning. And John, uh, you're in Jerusalem. We've been hearing these reports of sirens that have been uh, blaring in, in Israel as well in certain cities. Um, I wonder what your assessment is of the security situation in Israel, especially given that the New York Times is reporting that uh, this attack by Hezbollah was also aiming Tel Aviv. Yeah, and of course, Tel Aviv is deep into Israel. It's in central Israel, really. So uh, that would be hugely significant if they managed to penetrate uh, Israel's uh, missile defense system. Uh, here in Jerusalem this morning, I have to say it feels relatively normal. I'm sure lots of people will be waking up and reading the news and have uh, concerns. We did see some military helicopters flying uh, across the sky earlier this morning, some heading north. Uh, but certainly in Jerusalem, it feels uh, relatively normal at the moment. Well, a reminder, you'll see a QR code on your screen that will take you to our BBC News Live page on our website and app where our correspondents uh, are providing updates and analysis. Our BBC Newsroom is also bringing in any reaction and information as it comes. Now, in the meantime, here on the News Channel, let's speak to our senior international correspondent who's in southern Lebanon. That's Orla Guerin. Orla, uh, good to have you. Now, Given all your experience and your time there, could you put this into perspective for us? Because the New York Times is reporting that Tel Aviv was a target. We know that Ben Gurion is now open, the international airport is open. But when you look back at this war, how significant an escalation is this? Well, we know that the Israelis are saying Tel Aviv would have been targeted, but that didn't actually happen. Uh, because of their preemptive strike. We're certainly in a new stage as a day. We had been expecting this retaliation uh, for some time now. It was at the end of last month that an Israeli strike killed uh, a senior, a top Hezbollah commander, Fuad Shukur, in the heart of Hezbollah's stronghold in southern Beirut, a place called Dahia. And Hezbollah had vowed it would respond. Now, Similarly, the Iranians had vowed they would respond for the assassination of the Hamas leader, Ismail Haniyeh, in Tehran. Both had held off, and the feeling had been that they were waiting to see how the ceasefire attempts being uh, led by the Americans and the Egyptians and the Qataris would play out. Well, certainly Hezbollah is waiting no more. Uh, they said in a statement this morning that this was the first phase of a large-scale operation and that its full response would take some time and that the punishment will be harsh and severe. Now, I think we need to look carefully at the targets that were hit by Hezbollah today so far. Uh, they were 11 military targets inside Israel, so not critical infrastructure, not civilian areas, but military targets. This is according to Hezbollah. We have had no reports from Israel yet of any casualties and certainly no reports of civilian casualties. Similarly, on this side in Lebanon, the Israelis have hit uh, more than 200 targets, they say, but we have not received any reports of civilian casualties. I should tell you, Azadeh, that about 30 or 40 minutes ago, in the hills behind us, we saw two very large plumes of smoke um, from two, two detonations, two explosions. Israel had obviously struck close to the border area, which is in that direction. 
But I think the key to this is that so far, we are not being told that any civilians have been injured or killed, because that, again, uh, could be the, the trigger for another escalation. It's by no means clear when Hezbollah plans to carry out its next phase. It says it will happen, uh, but it certainly may not happen today. So I think for now, uh, Israel has got its preemptive strike in. Hezbollah has managed to fire, by its own account, 320 rockets into Israel and sending some drones. So for the moment, Hezbollah has made its point. Uh, now we have to see if Israel is going to take further action. All right, Ola Guerin there, thank you for all that insight. Uh, and again, Ola there has raised that there are still a lot of questions that haven't been answered, uh, including uh, verifying the nature of those military targets, uh, as well as how things could develop, of course.